Hi, my name's Jason. It's week seven, day 48 of my full-time chronic pain rehabilitation journey. Today I'm gonna to talk about how to go all in in your fight, and I have a name for it. It's terminal therapy. At the end of the video, I'm also gonna share a tip about how to stretch and how long to stretch for optimal results. But first, a quick status update. I'm tired. I couldn't get out of bed this morning almost. Um, it took me, usually I get up around seven, or 6.30, and I got up at bed, out of bed at nine. So I was definitely more tired than usual, um, but I did go to the gym. I did go to the recovery center. I did everything I was supposed to do. I checked all the boxes. So I am proud of myself for enduring. And I had a realization at the gym that I need to substitute the elliptical for the bike a couple weeks ago, actually. And so I've been building up my elliptical time um, just slowly to make sure that I can do it. And it seems like it is easier on my knees. So I am, again, adapting whatever I do to my body. And it seems like an elliptical is a much better option for me than a bicycle, just because it, there's less impact on my knees. All right, on to terminal therapy. What is it? Well, terminal therapy is simple. You act like you're going to die. And you're gonna do everything you can to prevent that from happening. It's essentially what I've been doing. I went all in, I held nothing back, nothing was off limits. I'm actually acting like I'm a terminal patient. And if I don't do everything in my power to save my life, I'm going to lose it. And the first thing that came to mind when I thought of this, this name, terminal therapy, is, is it appropriate? Is it accurate? And I think it might be, more than not. Um, I think that terminal patients, what they're dealing with is definitely a tragedy, but I think it's also a tragedy uh, for chronic patients to deal with their problems for as long as they have to. What's worse? doing chemo for six months if you're a cancer patient, or being in captivity with slow motion torture for 20 to 40 years? I don't know the answer to that question. And I don't think it's particularly important that we answer it, but I just wanted to show you the severity of what we're dealing with when we're talking about chronic pain and chronic conditions. They last for a really long time. They're slow, but they're potent enough to make you feel like you're kind of being tortured in slow motion. So it's not a trivial thing that we're talking about here. And I think the answer to both uh, an end of life scenario and also a chronic scenario is terminal therapy. Act like you're dying and do everything in your power to save your life. Uh, I have an analogy that I've used sometimes to describe people that are in a, a chronic uh, condition and I call them the walking dead. I'm not saying you're a zombie that eats flesh, but you're moving, but you're not fully alive, right? You're kind of walking through the world. You're, you're doing something, but you're not exactly living. You're not among the land of the living. You're just a wandering uh, pseudocorpse. It doesn't sound right, but anyway, don't take the analogy too personally. But the idea is essentially is you're not fully alive. And because of that, you're leeching life off of other people around you. It's not an indictment. It's just what happens. I've done it. I've done it to my family. I've done it to my wife because I wasn't fully alive. And the only way to stop essentially leeching life from those around me and find my own life is to fight like everything depends on it, like I'm a terminal patient. And I have an example of this. Um, I was watching the um, life story of Hal Elrod. He's the author of Miracle Morning. And he got a terminal, well, a terminal diagnosis with a type of cancer that has only a 20 to 30% survival rate. And so what did he do? There's nothing he wouldn't do. He did everything he could think of. Every fringe therapy, every dietary change you can think of, um, every type of self-help treatment, positivity thinking, whatever it was, he did it. And his example is the one I have in mind. I wasn't actually thinking of him when I started, but I'm essentially doing the exact same thing, only in a different context. He had cancer, I have a chronic condition. But the answer is terminal therapy. Now, I'll say this, going all in, can lead you to think, I'm, I want you to be like Rocky in every way. And I do in a certain sense. I want you to be like Rocky. I want you to have his fighting spirit. I don't want you to give up and I don't want you to surrender, right? No surrender, be a warrior, go all in. However, when you're working out, when you're doing your therapies, I do not want you acting like Rocky because you will hurt yourself, which will set you back and again, cause you to fail. So you have to have a Rocky light, Rocky light spirit but not use the Rocky workout-like methods. Those will hurt you. Now for the tip I promised you. Optimal stretching can take anywhere from 45 to around 70 seconds, so just over a minute. At a minimum, you wanna stretch for 45 seconds. I found that just over a minute, I count to 70, seems to be 
just right for me. Fighting for your life means fighting like your life's going to end. Hold nothing back. There's nothing you won't do to save your life. No therapy you won't try, no medication you won't try, nothing you won't do. However, be smart. Don't hurt yourself. Have the Rockies fighting spirit without Rockies training routine. Why are you fighting with everything you've got? What's holding you back? I'd like to hear from you. Please leave your thoughts in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe.